live from Houston with Vanessa Verdugo and Dubai with Dave Crane. You are watching The Toilet's Paper Diaries. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, Ernesto. Hello, Dave. How are you? I feel uh, really good that you're wearing my uh, baseball team's shirt, so that makes me very happy. <laughs> there we go. Houston, Ast Houston Astros. I'm wearing yeah, the two. Have, One they have, gone through, they have gone through a I'm controversial too. time, but I still love them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I realize that I'm wearing it. I don't want to go there because I know it upsets you. I was going to say I'm wearing it for two reasons. One, it makes you happy. And the second one is I couldn't find another clean T-shirt to wear. And that was my, my next online. So there we go. So if I wear this, I don't know much about, I know nothing about baseball. Uh, are Houston Astros everyone's favorite team? Or are they a little bit controversial with a challenge when you talk about them? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it because, of course, it's just something that <laughs> will make people very, very upset. <laughs> okay, here we go. Moving All on. I can say me. is that I still love them. Doesn't matter what happens, I still love them. So, anyway, right. let's just uh, get started today because we have some uh, really uh, cool stuff. So, um, well, you know, I mean, I think it'll be really nice to get started with um, the news that uh, Victoria's Secrets actually launch. Her, their uh, 2020 spring collection. So what do you think of that, uh, Dave? <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of people like to dress in rubber, so that's probably not an issue at all. I'll tell you what's really <laughs> interesting about this is the amount of people that are making homemade uh, coronavirus masks out of bras. That's a thing, because it, one cup going round with a strapping is something that they're suggesting you use to go out. I mean, I obviously won't use any of mine, um, but it's not a million miles away from this story about Victoria's Secrets and being dressed head to toe in one of your gimp outfits. <laughs> we are getting right now into uh, Easter week. And uh, right now, one of the things that we are hearing is that uh, here in the States, at least, uh, you know, people are concerned that uh, some church goers are not going to actually obey the uh, lockdown and they're actually going to be going to church and that, of course, it's a bit of a controversial thing. Uh, in, in the other hand, of course, I mean, there's other ways to say, well, you know, there's fun ways in how to celebrate Easter while quarantined for uh, the coronavirus. Uh, here in Houston, which I think it's uh, very nice here in the woodlands, even the Easter bunny is going to pass by in, uh, in a truck. He's going to be basically driving around all the streets saying hello to the kids uh, from far away. And uh, there's a ton of different things. Uh, going up there and here for example in the in the uh, church in my community they are actually having the uh, service is going to be completely broadcasted through the uh, internet so I mean this is a controversial issue because I understand in South Korea something went wrong right Dave yeah in the very beginnings of uh, in February I believe that there was a big um, religious event with about 200,000 people of which a couple of people were displaying signs of having the flu and they were already aware of the potential of the coronavirus but the leaders went ahead and did it and the people who attended then went back to their respective countries and this was stated as being one of the reasons that the coronavirus uh, traveled so quickly because with 200,000 people at one event catching it spending time with each other and um, nobody said anything about it they would take it back to their own country but right across the board, and again, we don't talk about religions or politics and stuff like that. Uh, certainly in Mecca, um, they've, they've uh, postponed Hajj because they realize that with coronavirus, it's not necessarily safe for people to walk around in such close proximity. And I think that's a really smart move. If you take it away from religion, you just look at gatherings in general. You've got to look at like sports events and you've got to look at rock concerts as well as religious events of reasons why people get together. And right across the board, they're all adapting and making it very personal. I know that uh, Lady Gaga is organizing an event um, that's going to be, uh, I think, from the 12th of April. Uh, it's going to be a one-nighter where a load of stars like um, Chris Martin from um, 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 Coldplay 
and a number of other big stars are going to be doing concerts in their living room. Now, would you like to go and see those guys in concert on a big stage? Of course you would. But what they're doing is adapting to celebrate being at home and celebrate the lockdown reasons, which is to make sure that everyone feels safe. I would put it to the religious leaders, and it's got nothing to do with me, and you can do what you want anyway. Um, thinking about your congregation, can you use digital to get people to experience their own worship in their own home and stay safe at the same time? Clearly, in the Woodlands, have made a decision that that's what we're going to do, and I think that's a very smart play, because until we know what's causing this and how to fix it, the only way to stop it is just to keep away from people. And as much as we'd like to get together with our families and so on, it's, it's really a death sentence to get such big gatherings like that. I agree, because right now, I mean, as, uh, as we know, this is the uh, most dangerous uh, week, at least coming up here in the States. So definitely, I mean, if you're going to be celebrating Easter or you're going to be celebrating any uh, religious gathering, make sure that it's actually that you're safe at it, because it's the only thing that we can actually uh, recommend. Uh, another thing that I was just uh, hearing, which I think is quite interesting, is that right now the uh, Sioux camps on the internet are surging in popularity because, of course, they are the parents are taking their kids to see the animals through the cameras, and I think actually that's a very that's a very cool thing. I was uh, uh, just sharing that the uh, castles and the uh, royal residences in Europe are right now also available for you uh, to, to look at them. There's 21 different uh, palaces and castles around Europe so that you can watch it. And I think this is a really cool thing because right now we cannot travel. So this is just something that you can do. And if you would like to see the, uh, the uh, castles, you can go to bit.ly dot uh, bit dot ly virtual castles what do you think of that dave i think it's fantastic i really want to do it myself as well i've got one of those uh, htc vive sets where you've got virtual reality and uh, many of them have just tours of places or believe it on a mountainside so you can walk around the mountainside and see it in 3d so the ability to 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 go to a 3d experience whether it's on the uh, on, on some kind of virtual thing or even on your laptop is amazing um, it's really beautiful when you see these places because you can contribute and, and donate when you have the experience of it and help towards the upkeep. Uh, because obviously we're all losing revenue because people aren't paying tickets to go there. But this is the second best thing. And it means that they can get fans and, uh, and create relationships with people throughout the world, which maybe they couldn't do before. You know, another of the things that I wanted to share today is that uh, right now some celebrities are deciding to go and uh, give lectures to some of the kids which are right now on lockdown. For example, yesterday, Peyton Manning, which is a big star in the uh, uh, NF NFL, was giving a virtual college lecture. And uh, we're seeing it. I, I have heard it already several times about celebrities, uh, you know, going and uh, coming out of their, of their uh, home and giving lectures to the kids. That's just something which is also very cool. I think that's going to lead to, again, I mean, we can see it happening here. Today's all about the reinvention, again, of, of businesses and business models. I think you'll find schools will end up with a lot more of this kind of thing happening. And it won't be just celebrities. They're the icing on the cake. But you'll get virtual experiences of people who are plumbers or people who are accountants or, or bankers or, or military or whoever getting a chance to chat to the kids about their life experience from home. I think this will be a much more normal experience for people. Um, and I think it also leads towards education taking a slight turn in the way that they experience how kids do this, because it means that you can get kids maybe more lined up towards practical jobs as opposed to just education. I mean, good luck. You're out there in a the job market. I hope you remember and I wish you all the best. So yeah. I think it's going to be an evolution uh, in that um, area as well. Yeah, talking about that picture that it is right now on the screen, uh, is it, a, it is a common picture that we're seeing now everywhere. I mean, right now, suddenly we're seeing Zoom meetings all over the place. Now, let me ask you, have you heard of the uh, Dude With Sign? Which this is, is a guy who's really smart, isn't it? It's a guy who always predicts social media trends. It's very cool. Well, this guy, I think it's somebody that you guys definitely have to follow. His name is Dude with Signing Instagram. And he basically takes the temperature from uh, whatever is happening in social media. So as you can see there, he says, uh, stop showing your, so your uh, Zoom 
uh, screenshots. And this is very funny because right now everybody's doing it. So it got to a point that everybody saturated, everybody had enough. So normally when Dudwit sign actually points his sign that, that you should not be doing something, that means that it's already a fad that is already saturated and you shouldn't do it anymore. So I recommend you, you can just go to Dude uh, with sign in Instagram and start following him because it's absolutely genius the way he does it. Which is one of the reasons why we came to the conclusion we weren't going to show clips, uh, images of us doing this. Instead, we've got these incredible thumbnails that you produce every day uh, advertising the show so people can see exactly what we do. And obviously, it's at a higher level than just switching on a Zoom and saying, here we are. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, now it's... Uh... Let's start getting a little bit more into the uh, into the subject, which is uh, new business models. And, uh, you know, I mean, I do not know if you noticed already, Dave, but uh, if you see in uh, your feed in Instagram or in your feed in uh, Facebook, there's more and more advertisements, whether it is for Zoom, whether it is for GoToWebinar, whether it is for a podcasting software, uh, whether it is for any of those platforms and services that provide you with the uh, possibility of doing similar to what we are doing uh, so that you will be able to to start communicating with your employees so that you can start having virtual meetings so that you can start also doing this kind of thing so i think this is just something which we are going to see more and more uh throughout these uh, coming months don't you think I think it's fantastic, and I also think it's going to develop into brand new versions of it that we haven't even discovered yet. Places where, that will be hiding places for people to meet um, who are really into a certain vibe or a certain tribe or a certain uh, community, whether they do it by audio and so on. There'll be a lot more tribes, a lot more communities who choose their own platform like this. And I think it's just starting to grow like that, which is really exciting. I mean, it really changes it from the good old days when you had... In the UK, I remember we had like four uh, TV channels and everybody watched the same thing. The idea of having an internet and the idea of having options on social media or even satellites was something completely alien. Whereas now you can do anything you want with your time, which is much more effective and also is a great way of leveling quality because the best ones will always rise to the top anyway, which, it, which means that there's better quality for everybody too. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, platforms that was actually starting to do quite well uh, before the the uh, pandemic uh, was uh, this platform here, Quibi. And uh, what they are doing with this platform was that they were serving with actually real uh, actors and, uh, uh, you know, Oscar winning and uh, uh, super award winning actors. They were doing very short little movies of, of five to 10 to 15 minutes and uh that that we're actually ready to play in your phone but right now quibi is actually suffering because right now people are uh, watching longer and longer tv shows because of course they are right now in quarantine so that's one of the things that we want to get you started on thinking because of course i mean i think the idea of quibi was great but they were not expecting what was going to be happening with uh the coronavirus so of course right now they are really uh, suffering also. So what is your take on that, Dave? Well, I think it's something that we talked about, isn't it, the importance of being able to pivot. I think the people are able to, to do well right now and get ready for the future have got it in their mindset that you can start reinventing yourself, but you have to see it as a, as a live business model that you have to change all the time. I mean, we talked about this earlier, and I think you've got some stuff from McKinsey, uh, which would be great to see that, about the, the importance of, of reinvention and so on. In fact, uh, uh, your whole section on transponder marketing fascinates me because yeah. I think without your ability to take the temperature of a marketplace, you can end up spending a fortune going in the wrong direction and finding that nobody's come with you. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine that used to be a um, uh, consultant in McKinsey, and he was just sharing with me this slide, which I think it's great. I mean, right now, companies need to think and act across five different horizons. And I love that they mentioned the word horizons because it's exactly uh, the best way uh, to do it. So you basically have to uh, resolve what's going on. I mean, what is happening so that you can figure out what it is, stop and think. Uh, then you have to figure out how you can actually uh, bounce back a little bit. Uh, you have to figure out what's gonna be your return. Uh, strategy you have to uh, reimagine uh, how things are going to work and i think the fifth point is very important 
which is going to be figure out how your industry has changed. Because if uh, we are thinking that we're going to go back, things are going to go back to quote unquote normal, I don't think that things are going to really be exactly the, day, the, the way that they were. I mean, the entire world has completely changed and we need to, to, we, we need to, to, before we completely reinvent ourselves, we have to figure out what has happened in each and every industry that we're in. Well, the, the key to it is always about the client, isn't it? What does your customer want? And giving them what they want. And if a customer's needs and wants are different from what you provide, what you're providing is a waste of time. So you've got to go where they're going as opposed to where you want it to be. And it's a combination of prediction and just smart thinking. And sometimes it means you've got to throw stuff away. Every time there's a revolution in, in, in technology, there's a lot of people that go bust. Think about the, the movement of all the um, storage to the cloud. When literally six months earlier, it was all about having hard drives and having data centers. So um, for every evolution that we have, there are people who were really at the top of their game who found the carpet pulled from underneath them. And so you and I have survived for many years in this industry as speakers, marketers, uh, by just seeing where things are going and being very agile to move with it. Yeah. Yesterday, they were doing an interview in MS and uh, CB, uh, CNBC uh, to Ariana Huffington, which is uh, one of the people that I really have respect for in, uh, in business. And uh, they asked her, so what's going to be the future of work? And uh, this is what she answered. Have a look. I think the future of work is going to change and the future of life is going to change. One of the fundamental delusions that has been driving us all, which is that in order to be successful, we basically need to be on all the time. I think that's going to be completely sacrificed because we are all seeing much more clearly the price we pay for that. Very true and very interesting. And I'll tell you one thing as a, a side effect of that whole thing from Ariana Huffington. I didn't realize she lived in a bedsit. With all that money, she'd have options, but there you go. She lives in where? In a bedsit. See the studio she was living in. Bless her. <laughs> must be difficult <laughs> i guess i where does she live i think she lives in new york city or something so you know that i mean if you have one square meter in new york it's about a million dollars so don't uh, don't uh, underestimate what's going to be the price of wherever she's living <laughs> i think she's right though the, the, the changes that are happening right now are completely unprecedented uh and they certainly should be because the power was always with the the big money people now they're going to be with the smarter people. doesn't mean that money's not going to carry its weight. Of course it's going to. But I think it leaves a lot of options for people to start getting into games that previously um, they weren't able to, to get into because they didn't have the starting price. So, for instance, if you're manufacturing stuff, as soon as you go digital, then uh, the cost of, of premises disappears. I mean, the likes of WhatsApp. WhatsApp sold for I don't know how many billions when it was bought by Facebook. But it only, it, it, it say it was worth, I'm guessing, $4 billion. It only had 13 staff. Now, scale that out for companies that are worth that kind of fee. And it just means that everybody's got a brand new business model that makes it very exciting. Anybody can be anything uh, with the way that things are moving. And, uh, you know, this is, um, uh, this is quite nice. We're getting a uh, live presentation all the way from Toronto. And uh, uh, we're having... Uh, Raymond Aaron, which is uh, going to be uh, telling us a little bit about what's going on with him. And I asked him to possibly report a little bit on the creativity. So he's the multiple New York Times bestselling author, Raymond Aaron, and a good friend of ours as well. So it's just fantastic to have him on the show. So Raymond, if you are ready, tell us what's going on in Toronto. Thank you. Yes, here I am, Raymond Aaron, reporting from Toronto, Canada, live. And what I want to report is that I'm in a wonderful luxury condo, way up in the sky, and uh, I'm isolated like everybody else. All of Canada is locked down. It's closed for business. However, my clients and I are making more money than we've ever, ever made in our life. One lady that I know wrote an email to all her clients saying, I disinfect high-tech equipment and got lots of business. She bought some disinfectant and a spray can and she's doing a brand new business. Another uh, person that I know, he owns a gym and of course his gym is completely empty. So what he did is he sent a message to all of his clients and said, I got an idea. I will, I'll disinfect 
a piece of equipment that you like, I'll send it to your home and I'll rent it to you. He's now making more business with his gym shut than he ever did when it was open. Lots of creativity. People are being inspired to be creative. They're gonna come out of this coronavirus making more money. If you're creative, you'll make more money. But what can I do? I mean, I'm doing lots of things. I'm doing webinars instead of live events, but I wanna take you to my front door. Why do I wanna take you to the front door? Why am I taking you out into the hallway? What is going on here? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. My gym is shut. So what can I do? And here's the answer. I go up the stairs. There's 25 stories to my building. I go up four times and do 100 flights of stairs. I'm 75 years old. That's my exercise. Everybody has to be creative. Back to you in the studio. Wow, amazing. Hasn't he, he, he's been to the top of Everest as well, hasn't he? He's just a pioneering Superman. Yeah, I mean, 75 and he's uh, super fit. So it's uh, it's very interesting. Thank you, Raymond. Okay, good. And also we're getting another, uh, we're going to another great report all the way from uh, Los Angeles from um, Chantel Simon. So let me see if Chantel is uh, there. Hello, Ernesto and Dave. It is Chantal Simone here live from Los Angeles, California. It is a beautifully, beautiful sunny day and many people are out there bike riding, walking their dogs, playing sports, and more importantly, there's smiles back on people's faces. So I believe it's safe to say that people are now getting adjusted to this new normal. So what I recommend people now to do is to take a moment and clear your mind and start to think of what you can do next. Maybe you can do something that you weren't doing before, doing something different given the times of the coronavirus because we'll be here for at least in this state for the next couple of months. So if you'd like to more information on mindset tips and what you can do to keep your mind focused on what matters, you can always follow me at, on all social media platforms at Chantel Simone International. Thanks so much and back to the studio. Amazing. Here's the thing, Ernesto. So that's, it, uh, that's very cool. It's always a pleasure to have her around. She's brilliant. But I always think about how the difference between our different reporters, some of whom are in quarantine inside their own house, and some of them are sort of kind of quarantine where they, they keep a social distance from people, but they're outside and doing stuff. I think you need to be very safe if you are venturing outside your house. Um, because wherever you go, if you touch things, then you're touching things that could be carrying the virus. So you have to be very careful. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to try to uh, show. Uh, I, I I saw a very good video from uh, this doctor on, on how to treat uh, groceries, uh, which of course I want to share. I've been trying to to uh, bring it on the show, but it hasn't really uh, happened. But I think it's something that we definitely have to be uh, considering. Dave, I want to um, before we start uh, talking about uh, you know the different pieces. You showed me a video yesterday with that made me it almost made me cry i mean it was just yeah. incredibly beautiful and uh it uh, of course touched a, a nerve because it's something that we are doing i mean it's also creative uh with the best intention it is a program it is a, a video um a show that uh, that one of the big actors is doing and he did something marvelous. So before we show this video, can you tell us exactly the whole thing so that you can put it in context? Yeah, John Krasinski, who people will know from the Jack Ryan TV show, um, which is great, and also from the TV show The Office, um, has his own show called Some Good News, which is created on web TV, on YouTube, and it's worth watching. He's also married to the incredibly talented Emily Blunt, who we'll have seen in, in many movies, who not least as Mary Poppins, got connected to Lin-Manuel Miranda, the writer of Hamilton, who also starred in Mary Poppins as well. Now, a super fan of Hamilton is nine-year-old Aubrey, a little girl who loves the musical but was looking forward to going to see it. But unfortunately, with the coronavirus, it was all locked down. So John found out about it, and John and Emily got on to Lin-Manuel Miranda, the guy who created Hamilton, and this is what happened. He's kind of like a backup dancer. He's kind of like a backup dancer, I would yeah, say. Yeah, he's kind of like a, like a b-boy. I mean, I forget that he's even a b-boy. Hello? Oh, wow. Hang on a second. I was wow. in the Wow. Wonderful Miranda? He just joined. Oh. oh, wait. 
Hi. Hey, Lynn, I didn't know you could Zoom bomb, man. That's uh, a yeah, little Liz, weird. This is a Zoom bomb. She's here to see Mary Poppins, not Jack the Lamplighter. Yeah, okay? exactly. Hi, Aubrey. How are you? Uh, I'm Good. so sorry you didn't get to see Hamilton. I'm so glad to meet you. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Oh, um, man, Lynn, thank you so much for stopping by, but uh, we, we pretty much got it handled now. We, thanks, I just, Lynn. We're good. We did a really classy thing. We sent her tickets. Oh, are you a big her, office man? Nope. She's no, not I'm, really office man I'm a big fan of the memes of it, though. Oh, nice. <laughs> thanks for bringing that up, Lynn. That was a sore like subject. The, <laughs> but we, um, we're sending her to New York, Lynn, and we're going to send her to Hamilton in New York. Well, that's amazing. Um, I, I think we can top that right now, though. Oh, wait. Something oh, wait, oh, wait. Sorry. There are a bunch of people just joining. <laughs> that's my favorite song from Hamilton. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman, dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished and squalor, grow up to be a hero and a scholar? The ten dollar, founded father without a father, got a lot farther by working a lot, harder by being a lot smarter by being the self starter by fourteen. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away Across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up Inside he was longing for something to be a part of The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton My name is Alexander Hamilton Moved in with the cousin, the cousin committed suicide Left him with nothing but ruined pride Something new inside a boy saying Alex, you gotta fend for yourself Started retreating and beating every treatise on the shelf There would've been nothing left to do for someone less astute He would've been dead or destitute without a cent of restitution Started working, clerking for his late mother's landlord Trading sugar cane and rum and all the things he can't afford Can't afford Every book he could get his hands on Living for the future, see him now As he stands on the bow of the ship Heading for a new land In New York, you can be a new man In New York, you can be a new man With him. Me, I died for him. Me, I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. There's a million things I haven't done, but just you wait. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. If you can't go to Hamilton, we're bringing Hamilton to you. Well done to all involved, John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, and Manuel Miranda, and the cast of Hamilton, making Aubrey's uh, experience of Hamilton special. And for everybody who's watching at the same time, I, I know the, the, the musical's incredible, uh, but I feel like I've just experienced something special as well. So I feel really privileged by watching that too. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And I think it's um, it's something that, that it just shows exactly uh, where we are and how everybody's contributing. And I think it's also very cool. Dave, you did something also really cool yesterday, and uh, I just heard it and I loved it. Uh, you did one of your amazing uh, hypnosis uh, recordings. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I can. Um... I've been a hypnotist for many, many years and I uh, do stage hypnosis and uh, therapy and everything else. And one of the things that occurred to me is that with the coronavirus, so many people lose their loved ones who die in isolation, which does two things. First of all, it makes it really painful because they never get a chance to say goodbye. It makes it really heavy duty for all the people who are working in the healthcare because they know what just happened. And of course, it's, it's, it's really painful and uncomfortable for the people who pass. And it just felt like unfinished business. Now, one of the things that I've done as a hypnotherapist for many years is there's a thing called chair therapy. Now, I didn't create chair therapy. I've just got my own personal spin on it. 
And what happens is you get an opportunity in hypnosis to say goodbye to a loved one who is no longer with us, but they're there, <coughs> excuse me, on a chair for a very limited amount of time for you to be able to speak to them. So I created an audio today and I've circulated it on WhatsApp to a number of people who have friends who have lost somebody or they might have lost somebody. And it doesn't just happen for coronavirus. If you've lost a parent or a dear friend and you felt there wasn't closure, but this is a very powerful way of being able to experience it. It's about 15, 17 minutes long and it's, it's completely free. I just wanted to go out there to help people who need to have closure and need to say goodbye. So if you'd like to get a copy of that, all you have to do is go to my own personal website, if it hasn't been sent to you already, which is um, www.thedavecrane.com. And on there, you'll see uh, a blue screen and my WhatsApp symbol. Click on the WhatsApp and just send me a message straight away saying, Dave, can I have a copy? I'll send it to you so you can share it with your friends and whoever else needs it. Because I feel that that was a, a, a real problem people not being able to get closure. I know a way of doing it. I've helped many hundreds of people in the past. And so this is my contribution um, for now to see what I can do to help people in the future. So there you can see it, thedavecrane.com, and you can go to get the copy of the chair, which you can share with anybody. And I hope it brings you uh, comfort and closure as well. That's very cool. So you guys go to thedavecrane.com and you're gonna see that page uh, just this page that you will see over here, and there he has his uh, WhatsApp. Click on the WhatsApp and let him know that you would like a copy of the uh, video of the uh, recording, and then you can uh, you can get it. That is awesome, Dave. I heard it, and I think it's uh, it's fantastic. I mean, I love listening to your voice. So <laughs> that, of course, it's a plus. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, if you don't like my voice, it might be a bit of a painful experience. Um, but it's it's very it's very powerful. Uh, I wouldn't have created it unless I know how many people have actually helped with it in the past. And right now in uncertain times, I think it'll bring a lot of comfort to people. So please feel free to share it with anybody you know who could help them, where you can help them get closure um, for the challenges that they're facing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I would also like to invite you to um, uh, download all the podcasts. Uh, right now, every single show that we are doing you could go and uh, uh, get it in uh, bit.ly forward slash toilet paper podcast. Uh, we are doing a big effort in actually putting this show together. We're showing, uh, we're showing a lot of really uh, interesting stuff. We're sharing with you a lot of stuff uh, that is going to help you uh, prepare yourself for what is coming. We are uh, putting together a section which is going to be called the uh, Fast Forward Show with uh, Ernesto Verdu and Dave Crane. Uh, very soon it's going to become first a uh, part of this show but later on uh, it's going to be the way that we're going to be continuing and uh, just to give them a sample Dave can we share with them uh, a sample of more or less the kind of uh, content that we're going to be uh, sharing on the fast forward so I know that you have a very interesting piece on the uh, new way of work and uh, new business model so possibly we can get started with that yeah, we can do. Um, I think that possibly um, I'm going to put that uh, podcast on the podcast. I'll put that audio as well. So if you go to a podcast diaries, you'll get a copy of that hypnosis audio there. So it'd be great to get that opportunity. Yeah, what I wanted to look at today was uh, how startups can get back uh, to get uh, can launch themselves and uh, get an impact during the coronavirus. So there's a couple of ideas for that. I'll just give a couple of things because we're running short on time. And I want to make sure that we do this with, in, with proper justice. So a couple of things you can look at is uh, offering free products and services to the community to so let people know who you are and what it is that you do, especially if it's coronavirus um, related. I've got to be honest, the, the podcast, the, the hypnosis track I created was not to make an impact. I'm not doing it for marketing at all. It's literally just a one way gift to help people get better. Okay. Also to work on innovative tech and solutions to fight the coronavirus. Often there's a, there's a, a government um, grant or organizations that are willing to pay if you've got solutions that can help make the coronavirus more palatable and help people who are suffering from it. So also connecting with a startup community and collaborating on ideas. You might have one thing that works, connect to other people who have things that work. Often they've got a page where all the services are on the same thing. 
onto those and share them with everybody. And you'd be surprised how much it helps with marketing and getting you on the radar of others. And also, I'll just put one last one in here, um, organizing um, events, which you can do online. So hosting webinars, podcasts, Q&A sessions, anything that helps people answer questions from their home and get more connected. I've been getting requests today, which is great, for my for the evolution in speaking. Uh, um, one of my clients said to me, Dave, can you do um, a session online to all my staff who are all around the world? Because we do lots of things. We do fashion shows. We do quiz nights. We want to do a motivational session. Can you do that? So my own business model is evolving to look after and cater for the different world that we're in right now. And for everybody who's interested in finding a new way of doing their business model, keep watching Fast Forward, which is a very important part of this show. Uh, and we'll give you as much as we can. So when you hit the ground running, when we get a chance to go out and see the real ground outside of our own houses, then you should be able to turn it around and start creating revenue straight away. Share this as well with other people, because I know that we've all got friends who are in trouble, suffering, the businesses are in a, going through a hard time. We want to share as much as we can so they can be successful too. So great uh, information, Dave. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, tell you a little bit more about it and also build a little bit of what uh, Dave was uh, talking about. And I want to share with you a concept which uh, I'm starting to develop and I'm going to develop it even stronger because um, I think this is exactly where we are. I mean, I like always to anticipate. That's one of my favorite words. Anticipation should be something that everybody could do. And this is something that is not really uh, that uh, complicated for you to do. Uh, everybody can do it. I mean, if you see that the, uh, you know, there's a big black clouds very, uh, you, you know, in the sky, then you can anticipate that it's going to rain and you bring an umbrella. Uh, if you know that you're going to do a trip to Finland in uh, January, you can anticipate that it's going to be cold. So everybody has that anticipating capability. And I want you to start anticipating how you're going to be uh, doing uh, business in the in the very near future. So I am developing something that I am calling uh, I, I'm, I'm calling transponder marketing. Now, if you do not know what the transponder and you're just seeing it right now there on the screen, a transponder is basically uh, one of those radios that are included in most of the aircraft in all the aircraft. This is the one from a Cessna 172, which is the aircraft that I fly. It's a very small aircraft. And uh, if you are in normal conditions, you always have to have it in frequency 1200. However, if you are in distress, you have to be in 7730 uh, or 7740. I'm not I don't remember because I haven't been flying for a while. But what this tells without you actually transmitting any voice, that is telling the uh, control tower that you are having a problem. And uh, right now, this is a metaphor that I would like to use because it doesn't matter where we are at what, what we are doing at this uh, specific moment in time. We are transmitting without using our voice, without using uh, our uh, social media. We are transmitting to the rest of the world where we are and what is going on. So my question to you, and I think it's just a very uh, important question that you need to uh, ask yourself is what exactly are you transmitting? So just from your point of view, you have to understand that uh, there's something that is called business to customer signaling, and you need to know exactly what is exactly the message that you're uh, transmitting. So in the case of Dave and I, we are doing this uh, because we want to make sure that we are not using the, the uh, normal signals that we would have been doing in uh, the past of trying to sell you into stuff. I mean, in sometimes, I mean, I was just hearing it right now from Dave. He was excusing himself for giving away an absolute jewel, which is his recording. And uh, right now, if you are transmitting to people, you know, that you're selling something might not be the right uh, kind of transmission that you would like to get. So my suggestion, and this is also Dave's suggestion, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask you in a second, Dave, what do you think of that? I think right now we have to forget about traditional marketing methods, but we have to do something that people will talk about. And that's exactly the point with 
Um, this guy, Mike uh, uh, Kaczynski, or whatever his name is, uh, from Hamilton, is what we are doing right now. We are doing something that people will need to think about. Right, Dave? What do you think of that? Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's, I mean, we had this challenge at the very beginning where we knew there's a combination of the fact that, like everybody, we've got to pay bills. And we spend most of our time on this show, you know, preparing for the show, broadcasting the show, chopping it up, putting it onto lots of different bits of social media. But we made a decision that the more important, the greater good was to reach people, connect with people, and help people. It all comes through and it all comes round. And this is what, what we wanted to be able to do. I mean, it's really strange when you talk about the idea that you're connecting with people all around and, and you're wondering whether it's actually reaching them or not, or not. Transport and marketing, as you say. It's amazing how many times that I will go into a shopping mall and people from my videos on LinkedIn will come up and take selfies with me. Excuse me. Even when we went to India and we went to the, the World HRD Congress, people were saying, oh, watch your videos, Dave. Can we take a selfie? And I didn't know. I didn't do it for that. But yeah. you'd be surprised in this kind of world where people are observing what you're doing and they're appreciating it from afar. I mean, if you get a thousand views on social media every day, you may think, oh, there's only a thousand people interested. But no, it's a different thousand every day. All yeah. the time you're reaching new people. So what you're sending out there, be very careful what you send out. Don't have bad days, but always, always be giving the best that you can for the benefit of others, and they will remember, and it will all come back to you. The important signal that you need to be sending is that you have to engage your audience right now with entertaining and informative content, which is exactly what we are doing. I mean, we are not teaching something which uh, is not something that we have tried out, but of course, we are doing something which, of course, is going to be bringing results. And why are we doing this? Because, of course, we want, at the end of the day when all this is over we want to manufacture desire for people to see that we are people that can bring value that are, are, are willing to work with us and uh you know this is where i was thinking yesterday okay so you're wasting all this uh, uh time i mean some people saying well why are you doing this why aren't you talking about speaking why aren't you talking about all these things well because i believe that what we need to do same as dave is engage our audience with entertaining informative content so that we can manufacture the desire and then we're going to go into the next phase which is of course giving away more information which is incredibly valuable and how are we going to monetize simply by helping in the implementation that's going to be the next model i mean we can help and we can give a lot of the information but what we can do in return is of course uh, you know, help you implement. And of course, if we are going to be spending time with whoever it is, then it's fine to actually get some money because, of course, at the end of the day, we all need to uh, pay our bills. So just remember, people buy what others want to buy. Once again, people buy what others want to buy. So if you make yourself desirable, if you are actually, you know, making yourself, I would like to work with him and people see that you're providing value, that's going to be great. Now, another thing that you need to do throughout these times, and that's another message that you be that you not need to be sending through your uh, transponder, is uh, start building anticipation. Right now, we are already at the very beginning telling you we are creating this show about uh, um, fast forward, and people are already starting getting interested about fast forward, and we don't deliver it from the beginning. We are those are the signalings we are transmitting. So I am just sharing with you some of the strategies that Dave and I are using that also you can apply them on your business. And with that, Dave, uh, we um, I finished my section for today. I really enjoyed today's episode, by the way, and I still love that stuff that you just shared with us on Transponder Marketing. It's a massive wake-up call for many businesses. And uh, I think the highlights of it, unfortunately for us, but it, it, I don't feel a grudge about it, was that clip from Hamilton. That blew me away, and I've seen it many, many times. And it's amazing how when you touch other people's lives, it just lifts observers at the same time. So brilliant clip. Well done to John and uh, Emily and uh, Lin-Manuel for creating that. See you guys tomorrow. I hope that you enjoy the show. Let us know what you think. Leave more, uh, more of your comments and uh, look forward to uh, sharing more great stuff uh, with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.